Welcome to Plugged In, a special program produced by Con Edison about all things related to energy and how that affects more than 9 million people in New York City and Westchester County. I'm your host, Sidney Alvarez. We have another great show lined up for you. First up, your electric bill is forecast to be less this summer than last. Find out why and how energy efficiency programs can help you save even more money. Virtual reality is not just for games. We'll show you how Con Edison is using this technology to train its employees and to make your service more reliable. The New York skyline is always changing and how energy is delivered is quickly evolving. We'll tell you about microgrids and how it is used in the latest Manhattan tourist attraction. We're celebrating 140 years of the light bulb. How do you think it's changed civilization? Plus, did you know you can get free light bulbs? We'll tell you how. Yeah! And are you full of pride? Con Edison is participating in the World Pride Stonewall 50 Parade. Find out how employees, families, and friends are getting ready to show their support. And finally, you got the power. It's not just about electricity, gas, and steam, but the communities and people we serve. All this and much more. So let's get started. You can expect to pay less for electricity this summer as compared to last summer. That's due to lower supply costs. This means New York City residential customers could see as much as a 6% decrease in their bills. For Westchester residential customers, you'll be saving even more, as much as 16%. All this is great news, but we want to help you and our environment to save even more. So to tell us about some energy efficiency programs, we are joined by energy expert, Lisa DeVito. Thanks for being on the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So let's talk about room air conditioners. Yeah, so as part of our appliance rebate program, we're offering incentives and rebates up to $25 for room ACs that are Energy Star rated. Um, in that program as well, you can also get incentives for other appliances like dehumidifiers, washing machines, what about smart ACs? Yeah, so through our smart AC program, you can get a kit to connect your room AC to be able to control it from your phone. And so it gives you a little bit more comfort and control over your cooling over the summer. And you can earn points for rewards uh, by participating in some of our events as well. And I really like that because you could be at work and if you forget to lower your thermostat or raise your thermostat, mm -hmm. I should say, you can control it that way. Exactly. Let's talk about the BYOT program. Right, that's a, similar to Smart AC, but that's for our central air program. So if you have a Nest or a Honeywell thermostat, you can enroll in that program and get up to $135 in incentives and then also earn as, mm -hmm. as you participate in events throughout the summer. So the last uh, rebate I really want to talk about, or I should say opportunity, is we are partnering with a bunch of major retailers, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. That's right. So, you know, LEDs are important um, to change your lighting. They last longer and they run cooler and help save money. And to help customers with that upfront incentive in LEDs, we're participating with some major retailers like Home Depot, Lowe's, as well as local drugstores like CVS and Walgreens and even Dollar Tree for discounts and markdowns right at the store on LED lighting. Lisa, thank you very much for your time and helping us save money. We truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So if you want more information, you can go to conit.com forward slash energy efficiency. Our next story is about microgrids, which in very simple terms is the ability to connect or disconnect from an energy source. The largest private real estate development in the United States just opened this year on Manhattan's far west side, and its energy is set up as a microgrid. Here's how Con Edison helped make it possible. The Manhattan skyline is always evolving. The latest real estate mega project, Hudson Yards. A $25 billion, 28-acre business, entertainment, and living complex, engineered to sit on top of a railroad yard in Manhattan's far west side. The Eastern Rail Yards of Hudson Yards is a series of seven buildings some of the major attractions you would find here are the vessel, which is an interactive sculpture that's 150 feet tall, and then the observation deck is at 1,100 feet. The developers approached Con Edison to power this massive endeavor, considered the biggest private real estate development in the U.S. Meet Rich Riccardi and Glennis Marmolejos, two of the hundreds of Con Edison workers who brought Hudson Yards to life. 
it took many, many different groups, many, many different hands. Everyone from our electric department and our gas department. It's a huge undertaking. Um, more than 15 groups in Con Edison were involved. Hundreds of people were involved. All, all together, there's 40, 13 kV, uh, 1,000 volt transformers. We needed to install um, six new feeders to feed the, the load. That, between the gas department, put in hundreds of feet of gas main. Con Edison and Hudson Yards work together to create a microgrid. This allows Hudson Yards to island itself off of Con Edison's grid if necessary, relying solely on coal-generated power supplied by Con Edison's gas system. This cogeneration plant will run in parallel with Con Edison's grid to provide approximately 50% of the electricity and thermal utilities for Hudson Yards on an annual basis. This on a very large scale is the future of the power grid. Um, in smaller buildings, smaller homes, you'll see more of this coming in the future. Hudson Yards, not just a shopper's dream or New York's latest must-see. It's the transformation of the west side into the smart side of energy planning. Along with The Vessel, the complex has an art space, hotel, and commercial and residential towers. Are you a gamer? Is virtual reality your thing? Well, now it's our thing too. Con Edison is using virtual reality to train employees to work safer and to help make your service more reliable. GLHF. Today we're putting Con Edison employees Errol Duval and Catherine Hernandez through virtual reality training, testing their skills with split second life and death decisions. In this virtual world, you can make a lethal mistake and live to talk about it. First we start a tutorial, so it'll tell you what to look for, it'll guide you through. So the VR training helped you bridge that gap. It helps you make, those, make the right decisions when you're in the field. Con Edison is using this new virtual reality training to help prepare its employees to avoid potential on-the-job hazards. It tests and advances the employee's skill set while introducing real-life scenarios. The idea of virtual reality training is basically taking the user and, put, and immersing them in a training environment. Look at your screen. The bottom boxes are the VR world Catherine and Errol are training in. The top boxes are the real world situation. They are inspecting current transformers at a Metro North commuter parking lot used to power electric vehicle charging stations. Well, you look to see if the cabinet is energized, you look to make sure that the tra current transformers are installed correctly. The training takes you from the basement of a home to the back of a restaurant in a matter of minutes, something that the real world would take hours, if not days, to do. We want to improve the customer experience. We want to be ahead of technology. We want to be right along with it. Now I have more confidence when I go outside to actual real world inspection. I think I'm a better employee after going through this training. There's a lot of things that you, you learn in class that maybe you may not have grasped that the VR environment can kind of help bridge that gap. Speaking of technology, between now and the year 2022, we will be installing nearly 5 million smart meters. The meters will provide all of our customers with more information about their energy use so they can make better energy decisions. Check this out. Lower Manhattan is home to the New York Stock Exchange, Federal Hall, and the Fearless Girl. But it's now the focus of Con Edison's energy initiative, the deployment of smart meters, which is technology that offers customers better control of their energy. In fact, you can see your energy use every 15 minutes. They can sign into their Con Edison account and actually visually see what their usage is, help them maximize or minimize their loads. And before they get delivered to your home, the smart meters actually start out in massive warehouses, like this one right here in Brooklyn. So in this warehouse, we have about 30,000 uh, electric meters that we can use in the field and upgrade customers' meters for electric. So it's very busy in the morning. Brooklyn rolls out of here. We have about 90 uh, installers with vehicles that go to different parts of Brooklyn. And we also, five o'clock in the morning, we have our box truck for Manhattan that rolls out of here. More than one million smart meters have already been installed. The goal is to install another four million by 2021. AMI Operations Control Center, this is Carrie. Meet Carrie McShay. She works in the smart meter control room. 
She tells us the meters also help with faster outage reportings, early gas detection warnings, and even MTA signal problems in the subway. When the installer completes the installation of a meter, they give us a call in this room. And then from there, we check to make sure that the meter is communicating and communicating well. This smart meter control room is staffed 24 7, all part of a safety and customer service strategy. The main benefits of the smart meter are improved customer service, improved customer response during outages, and of course, the number one priority is always customer safety. And back in Lower Manhattan, this fearless girl is ready to welcome the new smart meter technology into her neighborhood. Con Edison is continuing its smart solutions program for customers who are interested in alternatives to natural gas for their heating and cooking needs. We are also exploring increased gas capacity plans to allow more time for technologies to develop alternative heating and cooking solutions that customers will accept. The demand for natural gas has soared in recent years, but the existing gas transmission systems are at full capacity. This year, Con Edison had to stop accepting new gas customers in most of Westchester because of capacity issues. New gas pipelines would alleviate full capacity, but so too can efforts to advance renewable energy along with alternative technologies. Customers in Westchester may take advantage of increased incentives to upgrade heating equipment. Everyone wants clean, reliable cooking and heating solutions. We are committed to an orderly transition to a renewable energy future. To find out more, visit our website at coned.com and search gas alternatives. Well, it's time for a break. When we come back, yeah! it's about history, equality and inclusion, and a better workforce, plus a great deal of pride. The Apollo Theater is the showcase for black excellence. We'll take you behind stage to explain how Con Edison is helping the iconic theater. Interested in electric vehicles? We'll talk to our experts and give you the details about EV charging programs that earn you rewards. Plus, it's a woman's world. Hear firsthand how women are making all the difference in the energy industry. All that and more after the break. With Con Edison, you have the power hey, yeah, hey. I've got to go solar, to live greener, to drive cleaner. By helping add more electric vehicle charging stations, we're making eco-friendly commutes more convenient. We're building a smarter energy grid to deliver renewable energy solutions and provide more efficient, reliable power. We're installing millions of smart meters to help you track your energy use, making it easier for you to save money and energy. By investing in innovative technologies, we're making New York's power more reliable, more sustainable, and more resilient. So we can keep New York unstoppable. Because where there's energy, there's Con Edison. Tom Edison and Orange and Rockland will be participating in the New York City Pride Parade. This year's event is the World Pride Stonewall 50. To tell us more, I am joined by Nicole Leon, Director of Diversity and Inclusion, and a few members of the Con Edison and Orange and Rockland LGBT Plus group. Hey, you guys. Hey. So I gotta ask you, why is Con Edison and Orange and Rockland participating in the parade? So this is a really exciting opportunity for us. Con Edison sits in the middle of New York City, one of the most diverse cities in the world. And our communities are diverse and therefore our workplace is diverse. So participating in the parade really gives us an opportunity to celebrate our employees and our community. So let's talk about the preparations. I understand that a few hundred employees uh, can march in the parade. Tell us how we're preparing. So there's a lot of activity going on right now. Um, as you mentioned, we can have several hundred employees participate, but that also includes their family and their friends. So we're doing things like getting t-shirts, getting banners ready, um, getting Con Edison trucks ready to all support us in the parade. It's a box truck, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, That's going to be is. exciting. Yes. I can see that going down the streets of uh, Manhattan. Now, um, let's talk about you know the concept of fostering a diverse workforce. How do we do this? I know there's other things that we're doing. Right. So, 
I kind of in one of the, the key parts of our diversity and inclusion strategy looks at fostering an inclusive workplace. And that's where we focus on our talent management practices, whether it's hiring, mm -hmm. whether it's development of employees, and then how do we support and retain them? So things like our employee resource groups, it gives our employees an opportunity to connect and celebrate who they are and their unique identities. So let's take this back to Pride. It's a huge endeavor. Are you all excited about this? Yes. Yeah, I know, I know I'm excited. You're excited too. too? Well, thank you all for joining us. It's gonna be a very wonderful event. For more information as to how Con Edison and Orange and Rockland is participating in Pride, you can go to any of our social channels. Our handle is at Con Edison. The Apollo Theater is celebrating 85 years as a beacon for African-American contributions to global culture. Take a look. This is how you may know the world-famous Apollo Theater. The music, the performers, the legends. But there's another world. A behind-the-scenes dynamic, historical tours of the famed theater sponsored by Con Edison. And with the help of Billy Mitchell, known as Mr. Apollo himself, our tour begins with the Wall of Legends. These are people who have performed here over and over and over again to sold out show. You are now entering the world-renowned auditorium. Little Richard, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, and countless other legends and celebrities have all played out to sold out audiences right here in this very stage. Mr. Mitchell, thank you for letting me join you on stage, on the famous Apollo stage. What can you share with us? Well, right now we're looking at 1,538 seats. If you're superstitious, before you perform at the Apollo, you rub the tree of hope. And even if you're not superstitious, it's a custom. Back in the late 1920s, unemployed entertainers used to gather around the tree and they would perform, hoping that somebody from the Lafayette would see them and offer them a job. And to stage right of the Apollo, you'll find the famed Wall of Signatures. Uh, you have the likes of Snoop Dogg, uh, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, uh, John Legend, and Alicia Keys. And no tour is complete without checking out the dressing rooms. I remember Beyonce was in this room preparing for a show. The Apollo tours are open to the public as part of their educational initiatives. Camilla Forbes, the Apollo executive producer, explains. It represents the epicenter of, I think, African-American culture. These educational and community components are in line with Con Edison's corporate outreach, uniting the Apollo Theater with the energy company of New York City. It represents artistic excellence and talks about sort of the African-American cultural contribution to American culture, um, which ultimately has become global culture. International Women's Day is a focal point in the movement for women's rights and also their accomplishments in the workforce. Here's how we celebrated back in March. I never thought that I would ever be in a utility business. My job was to go to school to be an accountant. My parents always said you should become a doctor, a lawyer, or something like that. I'm the second female in the company as a troubleshooter. And we do anything and everything. We go to people's houses, we go for manhole fires. So as a lead splicer, my functions were to maintain the system, repair it. It's a great place for women. It's somewhere where you can grow and create a life for yourself. When I came into Con Ed, I thought, okay, I'm gonna stay here for two or three years and then I'm out of here. 13 years later, I'm still here and I think that is a testament to the company. I've been in the company for 17 years. When I came here as a meter reader, I didn't think I was gonna last five years, but 29 years later, I'm still here. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Pender, and I work for Con Edison. Hi, I'm Aisha Ahmad, and I work for Con Edison. I'm Janelle Briggs, and I work for Con Edison. It's time for another break, but when we come back, nearly 2,000 customers use steam energy. Learn about this amazing machinery coming up in our tech report. Plus, our Smart Charge program is making it faster and easier for EV owners to plug in. So start your engines. And we'll tell you all about how a pilot program that helps customers get rid of hazardous trees on their property and help prevent power outages.
Con Edison is always investing in new technology. In this next segment, Alfonso Quiroz takes a look at steam turbines, electric vehicles, and a simple yet effective way to avoid power outages by removing hazardous trees. Con Edison provides steam power to thousands of customers in Manhattan. It's a unique system that powers heating, air conditioning, even elevators, and many of the skyscrapers that are right behind me. The mechanics that run the system go through a deep cleaning process every few years, and we were there to watch a huge turbine get spruced up. What weighs over 50 tons is 27 feet long and spins at 3,600 RPMs or 60 revolutions per second. It's this specially designed cogeneration turbine that creates both electricity and steam. It's more efficient because it creates two forms of energy instead of just one. The gas turbine we use here is much like a jet engine on an airplane. We take ambient air, compress it, mix it with fuel, and then expand those gases, the combustion gases, through a turbine. Con Edison operates the largest steam system in the United States, serving more than three million New Yorkers. This type of spring cleaning is done every six years. They lift the large equipment outside, completely disassemble the turbine, clean all the components, and then they replace it back again. Once running, it can create more than 1.6 million pounds of steam per hour and over 180 megawatts of electricity. New Yorkers, like more and more Americans, are becoming increasingly interested in electric vehicles. Con Edison is clearing a passage in this new world of automobiles. And what better venue than the 2019 New York Auto Show to talk about the future of electric vehicles, incentives, charging stations, and much more. Let's go for a ride. Here at the 2019 International Auto Show in New York City, you can find almost anything that your heart desires. You've got this red convertible Maserati, or this lime green Audi TTRS. And check out this bad boy. You think you have trouble finding parking in New York? Could you imagine parking this in Midtown? Tucked away in the lower level of Javits Center, you could also find people from Con Edison and New York Power Authority talking about electric vehicles. So we think our customers are going to be more and more interested in electric transit. That's why we've been working with the state to deploy um, fast charging infrastructure around the state. That way people who have EVs and battery electric vehicles won't feel the range anxiety and they'll know that they'll be able to take their vehicle anywhere in New York State without concern of trying to find charging as well as promote our Smart Charge New York program. Nice incentives for charging off-peak, and you kind of feel good about not burdening the grid anyway. Uh, and we also went to um, time of day use program for uh, Con Edison, which gives us really nice rates overnight anyway. So between the two, this has been a really uh, good economic decision for us. The average vehicle emits about 4.6 metric tons of greenhouse gases. My new vehicle in a year uses less than half. I feel like I'm doing my part, so I, I want to make sure that there's something I leave behind, or if anything, a, a cleaner world. Whenever a storm strikes in Westchester, trees often topple over onto overhead electrical wires and cause outages. Most of those trees are on private property. Now Con Edison has embarked on a multi-million dollar pilot program to work with homeowners and municipalities in the county to remove those trees at no extra cost. I'm on three and a half acres in uh, Westchester. This is Francesco Affrunti, a 16-year resident of Armagh, New York in Westchester County. He recently signed up for a new pilot program offered by Con Edison to remove dead, diseased, or dying trees near power lines from his private property. I think this is a, a, a huge, huge initiative to be proactive in, in a manner where it's going to help the homeowners. In recent storms, the majority of the damage was caused by trees just like this one that fell onto overhead electrical wires here in Westchester County. More than 70% of those trees were on private property. So we've embarked on a pilot program with two, work with the municipality and customers to remove those trees. It's a $2 million uh, investment pilot, and we'll see where that takes us uh, with the um, likelihood that we would expand that to other parts of the county. When Con Edison said they were going to take care of that responsibility beginning to end and even take them off my property. I was very appreciative of the fact that they were doing this proactively anyway and that it wasn't going to cost me anything. Hopefully the, the partnership and the effort 
of the utility company and homeowners is going to help ease that interruption instead of it maybe being five days it could be two days instead of it being two days it could be down to one to be proactive is a very beneficial thing for uh, both the homeowners the service recipients and the utility companies to be thinking and partnering this way we are celebrating 140 years of the invention of the light bulb how do you think this changed civilization plus how would you like to get free light bulbs the answers are in the next story. 2019 marks 140 years of the first commercially successful light bulb. Well, it changed civilization a great deal. Energy historian and author of New York Power, Joseph Cunningham. Uh, it changed the nature of the cities themselves. It allows a uh, more efficient operation of business. It allows a nightlife. The development of the light bulb led to the development of an energy grid. Right now, I am in South Street Seaport, one of the many retail attractions right here in New York City. Well, behind me was the first power plant, known as the Pearl Street Station. A plaque commemorates the power plant within the neighborhood where the building once stood. The first grid in New York City began with 85 customers in 1882. Today, it serves more than 3.5 million customers, affecting more than 10 million people. Light bulbs and the energy grid have both evolved, and energy efficiency programs are now at the forefront of the conversation. Con Edison has two light bulb programs to help customers cut costs. The first is the light bulb giveaway. Well, we're doing this in particular neighborhoods in Brooklyn and Queens right now, uh, where we have a lot of growth in energy demand. The second program gives you $3 off the purchase of LEDs. We're helping people buy LED light bulbs for less. So we partnered with uh, retailers like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walgreens. Like its namesake, Con Edison continues to work on the next big bright idea, one that will improve the world for at least the next 140 years. Well, now you're plugged in. That's our show. Thanks for joining us. If you have comments about our show or questions, you can reach us on our social media channels. That's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram. Our handle is at Con Edison. Thanks for watching. Until next time, y adios.